as you see. Right, take 106. So this is the next instalment in my Lost in the Collection series. So number 39, I think, where I look back uh, or sort of revisit over a month, 10 records that have sat on the shelves <clears throat> unlistened to for, for five years or more and kind of reappraise them. Uh, so yeah, this is April 2022. So the 10 records that I listened to in April 2022, I'm just squeezing this video in at the end of April 2022. I've been quite busy this month and struggled actually to get it finished. So uh, yeah, the last couple of records squeezed in yesterday. So uh, I like to have a theme when I do these videos. And this month's theme is inspired by or from this. Uh, this is the 300th edition of Uncut magazine. <clears throat> this is my subscribers copy, so slightly different cover. It doesn't have to have all the all the hype on the front. Um, not quite sure why it's got Paul McCartney on it. I know there's an article by Paul McCartney, but I'm not sure how he's inspired 300 editions of Uncut magazine necessarily. But <clears throat> I guess as good as any. And the thing that I've kind of drawn my listenings from is uh, to celebrate their 300th edition they did a ranking list of the 300 greatest albums released during their lifetime so 300 copies is um 25 years the first first uncut magazine came out in 1997 so all of the albums on this list of 300 albums have been released um since 1997 <clears throat> i went through the list as we all do um how many have I got? I've actually got 112, I think, in physical format. So about 50-50 between vinyl and CDs. So I've only been back into or into vinyl the last 10 years or so. So prior to that, I'd buy everything on CD. So yes, yeah, so I've got, say, about 112 that I physically own. And then <clears throat> a good few more where I borrowed CDs from the library, when libraries used to have CDs that you could borrow. Uh, so I probably got some form or other, um, 150, at least, at least half of the 300 on the list. But for this month, <clears throat> I had to narrow it down from the 112 I've got, the half of that are on vinyl. Now, how many of them have I not listened to in the last five years? So, um, yeah, and that narrowed down to the 10 that I've listened to. And I'm going to show them in kind of order, reverse order that they appear in the in the 300 ranking list. So from 300 to 1. Um, and so first one I'm going to show is at number 269 on the list. <clears throat> and I'm shooting this video for the umpteenth time because I keep forgetting to say things that I mean to say. Um, I'm messing my words up. So I've put them all back in the covers thinking I'd finished when I kind of just watched the video back. No, I've, I've, so so I'm not taking them back out of the sleeves. Um, so unfortunately you're not going to see the, the inner gatefold. So apologies for that. So this one is number 269. This is the Arctic Monkeys AM. Uh, there's, the, there's the Mojo review of the time. Came out in 20... 13 I think it was 2013 um, and a bit of a return to form I think so I made some notes as I've been listening to these over the month so that I can remember <clears throat> so what have I said yeah return to form after a few kind of mediocre albums so I think Arctic Monkeys kind of burst onto the scene they were quite fresh their first two albums were everywhere very popular with my family with the kids in the car um, good sort of energetic um, fresh indie sound uh, then they kind of produce a set a couple of you know, weaker albums uh, and this was a bit of a return to form much more commercially successful I think um, and um, yeah a bit more of a swagger back in this album and so yeah enjoy going back to that <clears throat> and um, went up in my estimation uh, Next up from 2011 <coughs> is this album, Black Keys, El Camino. So this 
is a is a great album for me. It's probably I think I would have said when I before I listened to this, it was my second favourite Black Keys album, but it's now getting closer to being my favourite. Yeah, really enjoyed this. Uh, had a couple of um, couple of tracks were all over the place again at the time. Lonely Boy and Gold on the Ceiling, um, but yeah, overall there's kind of a lot of quality. Again, there's the there's the review from the time this came out. When did it come out? It came out in 2011, and this um, is at 215 on the list. But yeah, this is probably the, actually where I sort of parted company with the Black Keys a bit. I've, I've got most of their stuff up to this point, if not all their stuff up to this point, and um, yeah, no, most of their stuff up to this point. But I've picked up a couple of their releases since, but um, yeah, not been, they've not been, uh, I think it got a bit samey for me anyway. So, um, but yeah, this is a really great, really great album. Really enjoyed this. <coughs> Next up at number 187 is the 2012 release by Bill Fay. So Bill Fay, this is a beautiful, very spiritual, uplifting, although it's kind of quite melancholy in its feel, uplifting with some very interesting lyrics. Um, for somebody like me who, who really kind of focuses on the music when I listen to records, you have to listen to the lyrics on this really, and this one's not back in the cover. Very interesting album, very interesting story as I kind of as I understand it, Bill Fay produced a couple of albums on the Decca Durham label, late 60s, early 70s. They were sort of quite critically acclaimed, but not commercially successful. He sort of disappeared out of the music industry. I think he dabbled and did the odd thing, but nothing, you know, wasn't a full-time musician, certainly. Um, and for some reason, which I can't remember, kind of this came back 40 years later with this with this album and um, yeah really beautiful album um, so yeah really enjoyable um, <clears throat> yeah and um, yeah Jeff Tweedy from Wilco featured on a couple of the tracks and there is a cover of Jesus etc on here but uh, yeah lovely lovely album Bill Fay Life is People which was at 187 I can't remember if I said that or not next on the list at 125 is the um, 2015 album, isn't it? 2015 album by Julia Holter. Have you in my wilderness? This was a very um, sort of um, a darling of 2015, featured uh, at the top or very high, and lots of end of year lists. Um, yeah, I kind of got it during the during the year when it was released, having kind of seen seen some of the reviews before it was released and listened to some of the tracks from it. Um, bought it yeah very interesting my my first and my only Julia Holter album um, quite experimental in her use of her vocals she can vary her vocals quite a bit and um, I think certainly the song what was it how long it's got some sort of, sort of deep almost European sounding Nico-esque vocals whereas the track after it Lucette Stranded on the Island almost reminds me of Kate Bush so yes yeah, quite experimental and quite cryptic lyrics um, but interesting um, album. Have I said anything else? No, I think that's probably it. Title track is very good. Um, okay, so the next up we've got a little bit, a start of a bit of a theme which I need to remember to return to because this is what I messed up last time was saying there's a start of a bit of a theme and then not, not going back and saying what the theme was at the end. So. <laughs> Yeah, so coming in at a number 85 is the 2016 release by Radiohead, Moonshake Pool. So, yeah, at the time, uh, I thought this was a return to form <clears throat> as someone who really, you know, um, sort of got in got into Radiohead at the kind of outset. Not, not right in the early days, I wasn't there, but, you know, leading into the bends um, and... Um, OK Computer, enjoyed those albums, was a little bit wrong-footed by, by Kid A and Amnesia, if I'm honest, and kind of then sort of lost a bit of connection with Radiohead. I, I read that this was, a, say, a bit of a return to that kind of more OK Computer Ben's style or sound, uh, and, yeah, really enjoyed this, um, and really enjoyed this album. Um, but what I will say now, having gone back to it, that 
yeah, this doesn't break new ground. It sort of returns to old ground, and it is an enjoyable album, but it is an okay computer. So, so actually, um, you know, probably uh, the critics or whatever were, 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 were right. And so, yeah, but a really enjoyable album, um, particularly jumps out, you know, Burn the Witch, Daydreaming, the first side, absolutely kind of stand out, you know, well, excellent start but tracks in the burn it's got some really really strong strong material on it so yeah really enjoy this album um, um yeah so uh i have recently gone back actually and re-listened to my in rainbow cd and that's a fantastic album i don't know i kind of passed me by a bit i bought it um listened to it didn't it didn't sort of leap out at me it went on the shelf and i've gone back to that the cd of that and um fantastic album so i need to kind of maybe pick up a copy of that at some point so that's the first five so continuing this theme i've just said <laughs> that i need to remember to go back to uh bob dylan oh mercy from what is it from 2006 so no Bob Dylan modern times from 2006 so yeah this is um for me a continuation of a run of form started perhaps with um for me with O Mercy in 1989 1997 uh this uh continuing some really strong albums and I, as I said before I really do love the later period Bob Dylan uh and you know he's from including O, o Mercy <clears throat> through to, to 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 sort of it well, even last year or year before last uh, he's done five or six really strong albums that I think rival rival the kind of the the, the, the peak of his material in the in the sixties which I think uh, heresy probably but um, <clears throat> that's what I I think so yeah this um, is great you know Thunder on the Mountain again it's kind of uh, <clears throat> Leaps out, um, strong side A, um, double album, long tracks, those kind of Bob Dylan rolling stories um, with that rolling rhythm, like, which I, I'm not a musician, so I can't describe what it, what it is. But for me, it's that kind of just that rolling kind of rhythmical feel to his songs that I really love um, that he does so, so well uh, and has done throughout his career with those longer, longer songs, longer stories. So yeah, really strong album. Have I said anything? Have I said anything actually coherent about it in my notes? Nope. So <clears throat> yeah, so uh, nope, nothing else that I haven't said. So next up from 20, 2014 is The War on Drugs, um, Lost in the Dream. Say lost in the lost in the dream. So this was my introduction to the war on drugs, and I bought this and their subsequent follow-up album. Both fantastic albums. Um, still the only, only two albums I have by them, but both fantastic albums. <clears throat> Again, this kind of leaps out, leaps out the gate, uh, and um, a bit darkly uplifting um, because the songs are quite dark but they, they feel they've got an uplifting feel to them if that makes any sense <clears throat> you know uh second side an ocean in between the waves it's just kind of like a relentless as well relentless feel to it particularly the drumming on this um and i've written genre busting what i mean by that is i can't really quite pigeonhole what genre they are they kind of leap about a bit from are they indie um alternative um sort of a bit of country rock or um, psych or jazz you kind of hear everything in there but it never quite settles long enough for you to think oh yeah it's one of those types of albums um, so yeah really interesting um, War on Drugs uh, that was number 36 on the list and Modern Times by Bob Dylan was number 60 on the list I can't remember if I said uh, next up number 29 on the list is Massive Attacks Mezzanine uh, another double album uh, uh, with <clears throat> fantastic kind of opening angel um, rising sun leading into teardrop teardrop I mean I don't know if it's the pressing or the mastering or whatever but 
teardrop was just immense. I think I've written down immense sound on teardrop on this. Um, <clears throat> I'd written initially when I was going through this, is it front loaded? I think it's it finishes strongly though, so I think it starts strongly, um, kind of. It's strong overall. I mean, I do love this album, so I need to be careful what I say. It's it starts really strongly. It finishes really strongly, shall we say? I don't. I, the middle isn't. I was going to say meanders, but the meanders not the right word. Um, it's it's. Um, but it's a great album. Great listen. Um, so that's massive attacks. Mezzanine. Um, <clears throat> And uh, 20, number 29, <clears throat> okay, coming in at number 17 on the list is uh, Lucinda Williams' Car Wheels on a Gravel Road. So this is a music on vinyl issue from, I think, 2014, first time on vinyl of the 1998 album. Great album of you know, Americana, all country, um, and I think for me, you know, she was at the peak of her, certainly the peak of her vocal powers. And this is a, you know, a very strong album as well. It's quite a turbulent um, in the making. I think it took five or six years, several producers, several sessions, several goes to get it right. Um, and um, yeah, so, um, but glad, glad she persevered and glad, glad it came out. Uh, yeah, I kind of struggle with the more, her more recent kind of vocals. Um, if I'm honest, um, I know other people are kind of similar, but um, for me, this is a this is a fantastic album. Um, and uh, <clears throat> what have I written? Yeah, again, one two punch. First two uh, first two songs are, are are just you know fantastic. Um, right in time on car wheels on a gravel um, road, uh, and um, yeah, it's a mix of kind of say. Rock, more rock, rockier songs and, and ballads, uh, and you know, got some lot of guests on it. Some nice, lovely harmony vocals from from Amy Lou Harris. Really good album. And then the final one for this month, and actually the number one on the list, is Black Star David Bowie, twenty sixteen. So I just think you know, I mean, I can understand why this was number one on the list. Obviously, all these lists she actually is this the best album released in the last twenty five years. I'm not so sure, but um, I can understand, particularly if you think about, you know, the way this came about, the way it was kind of leaked um, it out, uh, the context of it, the, the circumstances around it. And then at the end of the day, it's a fantastic album. You know, this is just, you know, just such a kind of, if you like, fitting, <clears throat> if you like, tribute or ending to, to, the, to, to the David Bowie's life and, and career. Um, so yeah, I can I can understand why it's number one, um, and yeah, it's a fantastic album. So really enjoyed it back to that. So yeah, I mentioned about a theme. So pretty much, you know, there were four albums in a row where it was sort of as I was going through them and I was playing them. Oh, it's a monochrome cover, double album, about an hour, long songs, you know, a few long songs. Um, all the way through, so Radiohead and Massive Attack and and War on Drugs and Bob Dylan. And in fact, all of the albums, all of the albums, fairly monochrome, you know, not monochrome or, you know, black and white, even... Even this, although it's bluish, is fairly monochrome. Yeah, so they're all I don't know, of that ilk. Uh, just, just, just pure chance. Anyway, so uh, you'll be glad that I remembered to put that in at the end, um, having re-recorded this to get that to get that big ending into this video. Anyway, cheers, VC. Till next one. Thanks. Bye.